And when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. This day changed the game for us. When the Spirit of God filled us, it was no longer about the Spirit of God being around us, about the Spirit of God being on us, but about the Spirit of God being in us. Everything changed that day. And so today, as we talk about prayer, I wanna lead into this idea that what it means to pray and be filled with the Holy Spirit. I saw this in my journal a couple weeks ago. I don't know where I found it or whether I came up with it or I stole it from somebody else. I don't know, but it says, unless the Holy Spirit fills, the human spirit fails. Unless the Holy Spirit fills, the human spirit fails. Before we can be filled with the Holy Spirit, A.W. Tozer says, the desire to be filled must be all-consuming. I love how David Wilkerson used to say, it's a holy anguish. It's this holy thing that we're just, we long for, we're desperate for, we're consumed with the idea of come Holy Spirit. The greatest thing about prayer is not getting something from God, but we get God himself. So often we pray and we ask God for things, which is what we should do, he asked us to do that. But we try to almost pray as if we know the answer and we almost just wanna kinda like go around God, just get what we need or what we want and then be done with it. But yet, what God wants when we pray is for us to be filled with his Holy Spirit, be filled with his presence. We get God himself. And then from that place, is where we find our answer or that wisdom that we're needing and whatever, whatever it is that we're praying through. The words of our prayers are not powerful, it's the God that we're praying to. So we try to come up with different methods, methods and different ways. If I pray this, I remember growing up, went to a Catholic school and we used to say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou. We would have all these different prayers that we would say and it was more about doing than it was about being in his presence. It was more about the method and the discipline of doing something and not understanding the, the power behind just sitting in his presence. So many of us, we try to pray our way around God, but yet God just wants to be with you. He wants you to be in his presence. Prayer is the means on how we communicate and how we commune with God. It's how we talk to God, and it's also how we can rest and just be and his presence in the relationship. It was years ago, I was traveling quite a bit and I was gone for almost about a month at a time and I hadn't seen my wife in a while and Zane and one of the things we finally got to go and meet them in Florida, we were on vacation and me and Hannah are just sitting on the beach and I remember I realized some time went by and we weren't even talking to one another but it was just something about we're together, we're, we're here. There's just something about just being with him and resting in his presence. And sometimes it's hard for us to even do that with keep our mind from getting distracted during our prayer time because we're immediately thinking about what we gotta do today or what we gotta do at work or the different things that we're trying to process or what we're needing answers for. And sometimes you can say nothing and hear nothing and yet be filled because you're in his presence. But we try to do this sometimes when it comes to some of the, uh, this wasn't like a magic box, by the way. It looks like, it kind of looks like I'm gonna do like a magic trick or something like, ta-da! But anyways, side note. But this is how we can kind of sometimes try to deal with life. We, instead of being soaked and covered in his presence, we tend to go, I went to church once this month, and now we deal with the pressures of life, and yet... There's nothing to flow out of that. We're, we're, we're in a dry place, we're in an empty place. Or we, I gave God a tip today, so now when financial pressures come, he should bless me. But yet, there's just not a lot in there. There's, it's the idea of, are we soaked in his presence so when life happens, there's things that can flow out of us you know what, I know, I know this scripture about this promise of God that he will never leave me nor forsake me, but you know what, tomorrow I need to go back, 
and soak in his presence some more. Not come with my answers, God, like here's, here's what you need to do for me. But now when we deal with pressures of our marriage is struggling, our job is bringing pressures of life, there's something to flow out of us because we spent time with him, but we have to do it on a consistent basis. Going back to our source. So when the pressures of life come, there's something that we could flow out of us versus now we're just trying to do it on our own. And yet we just constantly in that dry place. Come to me, those who are weary, and I will give you rest. You see, the pressures of life are gonna happen. Some of you are like, yes, I can name you three of them right now that I'm dealing with. The pressures of raising kids. Maybe there's that one kid in your, that you have that you're really struggling, they're really struggling in life. And you constantly feel that pressure. That's that, where you have to go back and say, God, I trust you because I don't know what to do. I don't know what else to say. I don't know how else to get them to pay attention or to, to want to love you. I just, I don't know why they're rejecting you. And it's going back and trusting over and over. And even when you feel like you don't see the results of what's happening, it's trusting the process. Prayer is the means on how we communicate and commune with God. Prayer is relational. It's a relational action that we do, not some religious act that we do. It's a, it's a conversation. Our God, who's in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's, it's a relational thing. That's what's so great about this faith, this, this relationship that we have with the God Almighty wants to have a conversation. He wants to spend time with you. There's three things we can do during our time of prayer that we could ask God to fill us. And number one is ask for more of a surrendered heart. Surrender your heart. Surrender your will. Prayer is not us coming to God to try to control it. It's, prayer is not trying to secure control, it's trying to surrender control and place it in his hands. Ask God to reveal some areas in your life that you need to surrender. What's something you need to surrender to him today? What's a habit, behavior, maybe it's a thought that you have that you keep going back to. Anybody ever just in the middle of the night, you're just wrestling and you just can't fall asleep, right? Don't meditate on those things. Meditate on his word. Meditate on the promises of God and allow those to soak you and to fill you and live from that place. So number one, it's ask for more of a surrendered heart. Number two, ask for a greater hunger. Our flesh is not gonna want more of God. <laughs> it's gonna resist. My spirit is willing, but my flesh is weak. Your spirit desires to be in the presence of God, but your flesh is gonna resist the idea of I don't wanna surrender that but continue to ask God for a greater hunger. Being filled comes through the persistent prayer time. I think of when Jesus was telling his disciples about the persistent widow in Luke chapter 18, how she wanted justice. I'm standing here today because of someone's persistent prayer, <laughs> praying for my salvation. It was my mama dukes, right? <laughs> praying for me can tell you many times, coming home in the middle of the night because they, they didn't know what else to do with me. Coming home in the middle of the night, I would open my front door and there's Mama Dukes in the front room kneeling down, praying on the couch. It's coming back to him over and over again, being persistent with your prayer time. Because why does God do that to us? Because our prayer time it's more about who we're becoming than what we're receiving. God knows what you need, but it's about who you're becoming. I love this little like verse here we can find here in Thessalonians. It like gives us a process on how we can pray. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse 16. Rejoice always. 
pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Always go back to choose joy. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Come to me. He has, he desires to fill you with his presence and be the, your God for you and answer maybe that request that you have, but he also knows it's about building up your character. It's about building up who you are so when he does bless you or he does answer your prayer, you're able to steward it the right way. He knows if he were to answer your prayer right away at certain times that it would be do no good for you. But he needs to come and pray continually because this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. And sometimes you just have to choose the joy even when you don't feel it. Sometimes you just have to pray continually even though you don't feel like you're hearing anything in all circumstances, because this is the will. <laughs> that just praying through this formula here will help us help us to get our spirit filled so when the pressures of life happen, you know what? I've got God's promise in my life. I'm not gonna allow this fear to fill me. I'm gonna allow my, my soul to be filled with faith instead. So asking for more surrendered heart, asking for a greater hunger, and then ask for an increased faith in his holy promise. See, he's promised us that the heart of the Father longs for you to experience the person, the power, and the presence of the Holy Spirit as Jesus, through his life, death, resurrection, and ascension, has accomplished everything necessary for that to happen. In Luke chapter 11, Pastor Matt referenced it earlier, it says this, which of your fathers, if your son were to ask for a fish, would you give him a snake instead? Or if he asked for an egg, would you give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? He's, have you asked him for it? Have you asked him, say, come Holy Spirit, fill me today? Sometimes that's what, like the first thing you gotta do before you pull up to your job tomorrow and you're in the car, before you get out, just say, come Holy Spirit. So you don't take out your coworkers, right? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Help me to deal with this terrible boss, right? <laughs> you see, our faith brings answers to prayer, but enduring faith brings answers with character. Again, he wants to build your character to become more like Christ. And so us coming back into prayer over and over again, we're becoming somebody that he desires. When I come to the Lord and I'm praying with him on a consistent basis, even though I may be dealing with this or don't know what the future holds or I'm struggling with this, either way, he's building me up to be the man of God he desires me to be because I'm sending time in his presence. Prayer time. God is often changing you through your prayers versus answering them you coming to him on a regular basis. I love how it says in Hebrews chapter 11, and without faith it is impossible to please God because anyone who causes him, comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Again, just kind of that holy anguish of just desiring his presence, submitting, surrendering your heart, putting your flesh aside. That's why we're doing the 21 days of fasting and prayers because we're trying to, kind of decrease ourselves so that he can increase inside of us. And suddenly there came a sound. The Holy Spirit desires to fill you. I love how it's, uh, Andrew Murray says this in his book, Absolute Surrender. I encourage you to read that. And I've also gotten some content too from E.M. Bounds, on Necessary Prayer. I encourage you to read that. But it says this, be filled with the Spirit is simply this. Having my whole nature yielded to his power when the whole soul is yielded to the Holy Spirit, God himself will fill it. It's surrendering to him and just kind of trusting him. Anybody love tacos? Love me some tacos. Taco Tuesday, right? Got you nice guacamole, right? My wife makes an awesome salsa from home. 
There's something about those fajitas when you hear them coming around the corner at the restaurant. It's that glorious sound. Some of you are like, I don't like Mexican food. Well, sorry. I love tacos. Love me a good taco truck, right? But I want to talk through a way that I heard from a podcast, this guy talking about a prayer method and he referenced it called tacos. And I'm like, this is totally from the Lord. I can remember this. You, some of you are going to walk away today and say, so what did you talk about, learn about at church? Tacos. <laughs> but hopefully... This can be a little bit more memorable for you. I heard this pastor, he was talking about this and how they got Scrabble pieces and they put them in a bag and he would pass them around to his kids and they would pray through this acronym. And the first one is this T, Thanksgiving. As we're praying, come to the Lord and express gratitude. <laughs> Thank you, God, for my kids. Thank you for my wife. Thank you for my job. Thank you for waking me up today, All right? Thank you that I've had the privilege and the honor of hearing the gospel. Sometimes we don't realize how privileged we are to be able to have access to the gospel when 42% of the world doesn't have access to the gospel. That's crazy, that's billions of people. But yet, he's allowed you to come into this house this morning and sing and lift up his name and lift up your voice have access to this, the greatest message that the world has ever heard, the gospel of Jesus Christ. We should thank him. And then we also should give him adoration. Recognize his glory. Praise God for who he is. Just have adoration for the fact of, I can't believe this magnificent God desires a relationship with me. Thank you, Lord, for making that possible. Just sometimes I've had this thought like, I don't know how people live without having a relationship with guys. Like, how, I don't understand how they, like, how do you deal with things in life? Like, what, who do you go to? Like, what do you do? Just, it just doesn't make sense to me because I've had the privilege of hearing the gospel and having a relationship with Jesus. Tacos, see, confess, right? Admit your sins and seek forgiveness. Find yourself at the foot of the cross as often as you can and be thankful you have a cross to run to and a God that would embrace you, that he will never leave you nor forsake you. And then, oh, others, pray for people in your life, right? All right, Z, you ready? You gonna help me? Come on. This is my son, Zane. Everybody say hi, Zane. Speaking of prayers, help me out. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right. Got it? Hold it up. We pray for others because we can see the burden. All right, I feel bad. Don't give you one. There you go. <laughs> Many of you came in carrying a burden today. And we, sometimes, you can almost see it on people the weight that they're carrying. Is it burning yet? You're gonna be ripped after today, bro. <laughs> Three services, like, you're totally gonna be ripped today. Jiu-jitsu on the Tuesday, you're gonna kill it, right? But why do we pray for others? It's because we can take the burden and we can carry it for them. We may not fully feel the burden all the time like they do, but for that moment, they can have a sense of recognizing. That's why it says, our Father, who art in heaven, holy be your name. It says, our Father, not just, yes, he's my Father, but he's our Father, so when we pray, is it killing you, right? Sorry, no one's paying attention, they're laughing at you. <laughs> your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us this day, right? It's talking about, it's this, we're doing this together. We're carrying the burdens together. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, good job, buddy. Thanks, man. <laughs> so tacos, Thanksgiving, adoration, confession, others. We should be praying for others. We should be praying for missionaries. Those that are in the mission field, it's one of the things we do every morning. We FaceTime my mom or Mimi in the prayer line and she prays. We pray for our missionary friends. We pray for others 
especially if you know someone that's going through something and maybe they haven't asked for it, but yet just take that time. Maybe throughout your day, someone comes to mind. You don't know why. Take a moment and pause and pray for them and then send them a text praying for you today, praying for your kids today, praying for your business today. Because you never know when they get that text, that can be the very moment that they realize, you know what? Our Father, we're in this together. Tacos, last one, S, self. Pray for yourself. Who am I becoming, Lord? I, I'm, I'm becoming the person that I never, this is not who I am. I'm thinking this way now, I'm living this. This is not who I am. I know this is not who I am. I should be praying for yourself that God would help you have a surrendered heart, that he would give you more of a hunger, that your faith would grow and knowing that be filled with the Holy Spirit. And just allow God to minister to you and sometimes you don't have to say anything, just be quiet and listen. That's the way a relationship works. Sometimes he'll wanna talk to you and whisper to you. Sometimes you may be trying to get your attention. <laughs> but there's something about just being still and allowing his presence to fill you. Why don't we just, let's just take a moment and let's just kind of pray into this. Let's just do it together. So right now, if you wanna just bow your head and close your eyes, and let's pray into the first thing, Thanksgiving. Just begin to give God thanks. Take a few moments now and give him some adoration and just recognize how holy he is and how magnificent he is. Now this one may hurt a little bit. Maybe com confess some things. Confess some things to the Lord. Bring it to light. Take a few moments now and pray for somebody. Take a few moments now and pray for yourself. Maybe you came in this morning and you don't have a relationship with Jesus and Right now, with no one looking around, I just want to encourage you to take that step to receive Jesus into your life. He sees you, he knows you. He desires a relationship with you so much that he sent his one and only son to die on a cross for you. So if you want to receive Jesus for the first time and take that next step in your life, I'm just gonna simply right now just ask you to raise your hand. all say this together. Dear Jesus, I invite you into my life. Fill my heart. Forgive me 
thank you for what you did on the cross. Help me to follow you all the days of my life. Amen. Amen. Can we give the Lord praise this morning? Amen. There's gonna be times in our life where we're gonna feel the squeeze and the pressure of just everyday life. It's coming back to him and recognizing the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Come on, he leads me beside. Come on, restore my soul. Even though we're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because your rod and your staff, you are with me. We just gotta spend more time with them. So when we are facing that moment where we feel like we got nothing left to give, we can know that he can restore our soul. He can bring us back to life. We can trust in him. In Ephesians, it says this, chapter three, verse 14, for this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit and your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know that this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all his fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever, and everybody said, amen. He desires for you to be filled. And he desires to fill you to the fullness of who he is. Will you stand to your feet this morning? Some of you have been carrying the heavy burdens for a long time. And it's beginning to affect how you think, your emotional life, it's impacting your soul, it's impacting your relationships. And God wants you to know that we're here to carry this together and ask him for a surrendered heart, ask him to increase your faith. And then you need to remember that holy promise and suddenly there came a sound and it filled the room and it filled them. And that same spirit that filled that room can fill this room, it can fill your car, it can fill your living room, it can fill your house and it desires to fill you. Amen. So Father, I bless your people as they go today. Lord, that we're not, you didn't just come to heaven, perform great miracles and then leave us. You desire to fill us with your Holy Spirit. And so Lord, I pray that we can be people that walk in the Spirit, that live in the Spirit, that recognize that we need to surrender our lives to you. Lord, that you would increase our faith, that we would hold on to the promises of life, of promises of your word, so when we face life, we don't get beat up and worn out, but we can squeeze out the promise that you've placed within us your Holy Spirit. Bless your people as they go today in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen. God bless you. Thank you guys. You guys have a great week.